All right, so explain a few of Peter the Great's achievements as Russian czar. And then we'll talk more about him today, review a little bit, and I'll get you working on your assignment. Conrad, what's up? Y'all finished. Good. All right. Okay, all right. So on Friday, we talked a bit about Peter the Great. I'm going to put these slides back up. So in case you need to jot some more notes down with Peter the Great, we will continue on. We'll talk more about him. Anyway, we did mention about Ivan the Terrible on Thursday. We mentioned about his reign as the first czar of Russia how he wanted to try to build a Roman Empire to the east, right? What was kind of a loss with the Byzantine Empire, he wanted to bring back, though, in Russia. And we mentioned about Ivan the Terrible, how terrible this guy really was to his boyars, right, the nobility. What was that secret police call that he had control over that uh, terrorized the nobility, the boyars? What was that secret police call that he had? Ivan the Terrible. You got to think back a little bit. What was it called? One of your terms. Might be hard to pronounce. I understand that. Olivia, you got it? One of your vocab terms. <laughs> now the boyers are the nobility. What's that? Yeah, so Prechnik, good job. So with the old Prechnik, he would use this to terrorize these boyers to make sure that they won try to go against them. So unlike Louis XIV, there he was using the Oprechnik to use fear and even kill them if they're opposing him. All right, anyway, we mentioned about Ivan the Terrible, all oh, even killing his own son. Oh, terrible guy. We mentioned about the creation of St. Basile's Cathedral in Moscow, which was trying to build a sense of religion, unity for the people of Russia. That was something to know about Ivan the Terrible, what good he had, right, that he brought to Russia, unified it, pushed out the Mongols and different types of groups. And, well, that's kind of where it ends. Anyway, Peter the Great comes along. His goal is to gain access to what? What does he want to gain access to? It's the only way to enrich Russia. The only way to access Russia's potential for growth and power. All these European countries had access to this, much of European countries. Kicked off the age of exploration. What did he have access to? Oh, it's right up here on the board. It's what, oh, what do you need access to? Water, right? Yeah, good, good. All right. So he was great. His first goal is to expand way up here to the ball and sea and the black sea, which he does. I have the terrible pride too, but in any case, with Peter the Great, he comes along and he gains access to it. So with that, it starts to gain uh, resources, materials, access to marketplaces they never had before, which is going to increase the wealth. So for Peter the Great, he wanted to try to westernize, modernize Russia. So he pushes far up here to the Baltic Sea, and he wants to create a city 
that is uh, resentful of these European countries, Western Europe, that he can bring imports from Europe to Russia. If you look at all these major cities in Russia, where are they at? They're focused, right, to the West, close to these European countries, so they can gain access to the imports, the marketplaces of Europe to advance them. So think of them just trying to catch up. Think of them way behind the eight ball. Anyway, Peter the Great was a strong leader, and uh, the reason for it too is because he was what? You guys remember how tall he was? Did I talk about this with you guys? He was six eight. He was six eight. So this guy's like LeBron James walking around. So this is a time when the average height of men was about like five two. I'm five seven, so I can tower over some of these five two guys here. Anyway. So with Peter Green, six eight, this guy's walking around, and you gotta imagine if he walks in a room full of lawyers, they're gonna quickly shut their mouths and listen to what he has to say. Anyway, he creates the capital, St. Petersburg, which they uh, create a palace, right? What's a czar? What's a king without a palace? Like Louis the Fourteenth, he had the palace of Versailles. For Peter the Great, he creates the Winter Palace or Peterhof, right? And that gets advanced over the times of these generations of czars and leaders of Russia. So I'll show you a picture of that here soon. Anyway, for, Luke, or for uh, Peter the Great, okay, like Louis XIV, he wanted to try to control his nobility. They're the ones that have the wealth. If anybody's going to try to oppose Peter the Great, it's going to be the higher class individuals, these wealthy individuals. So for Peter the Great, he actually spent some time in France to try to learn and understand the new ways of uh, modernization, of westernization. So he actually studied in France. And there he realized that there's a lot of sophistication, there's new methods, new ways of uh, sophistication that Russia needs to catch up with. So first off, he's like, hey, nobility, the boyers, they have these long beards. In France, that's not the case. We almost look like barbarians. We look like we're heathens. So he first trims the beards. He first trims, uh, even shaves the head of a lot of these boyers. So that's kind of what this image is showing. I know it's way back when, poor drawing. Poor drawing. It looks like eyes and hands. You're all drawing that. They drew that. Or or it's better than that. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe not. Anyway, so he trims the beards of the boyers. He takes even their clothes and trims their clothes down. He literally cuts their clothes right in front of the rest of the boyers so they look a little bit more westernized, so they look a little bit more sophisticated. Also, he's like, hey, when we gather at the dinner table, we just can't eat with our hands like barbarians. We need to use table manners, okay? We need to use utensils when we eat. Can you imagine how much of a cultural shift that would be, a cultural awakening? It's like, oh, we've been doing this forever. What are you doing? Why are you changing the way we look, the way we eat, the way we uh, communicate? This is unbelievable. Anyway, Peter the Great, he literally controlled his boyers to a point of even trimming their beards, cutting their clothing to make them appear and look a little bit more modern. All right. In any case, like I mentioned, for Russia, they advanced their way to the Black Sea, having access to war walkers, right? And a means of trade with the Ottoman Empire and even defeating the Ottoman Empire in certain small battles to claim territory and land towards the Mediterranean. So you can see how the Ottoman Empire is kind of losing grasp here. They're still very powerful, it's very strong. But uh, with Russia and Tsar Peter the Great, you can see how they're moving in a direction of power and uh, advancement. And anyway, for uh, Peter the Great, the goal is to try to create a strong navy. Now that he has access to water, right? The goal is to try to create a navy that is resembling of England. So he would bring a lot of the nobles of Europe. So you got to think of France, of England, of even some of these German-speaking states. He'd bring them to Russia and try to teach the boys, try to teach right these uh, artisans, these merchants, these uh, market owners in Russia to try to cooperate and advance and modernize. So yeah, they would go through these trainings, so to speak, and it was all done and all controlled by Peter. All right, anyway, you can see how he's trying to force this modernization in Russia. Okay. All right, so here's St. Petersburg, right? So obviously named after Peter the Great. Here's the Winter Palace. So, yeah, I know it could totally look like this one. Peter the Great was here. Uh, he got this started. He got this kicked off. But for St. Petersburg, this was known as the Window to the West or the Venice of the North. So if you guys want to put that in quote right beside St. Petersburg, that'd be great. So the window to the left. So he built 
was way up here in the Baltic Sea and looking into Russia. Any more discussion here? His goal is to try to get as close as possible to Western Europe to bring all his influence to Russia, make it more modernized, make it more Western. In other words, he's trying to keep up, he's trying to catch up, he's trying to copy what's going on in France, what's going on in England. So again, what's the king without a palace? Well, there's the Winter Palace. It's beautiful. And you can see the Renaissance artwork scene, right? In the palace, again, trying to copy what France had, trying to copy what England had, and bring a sense of culture to Russia. Again, we mentioned with St. Basile's Cathedral in Moscow, how that was a means to bring an architecture and symbols to Russia, which it is. It's beautiful. And uh, how this Russian Orthodox Church looks is very appealing to the eye and bring a sense of religion to Russia. Anyway, for Tsar Peter the Great, his goal is to create this palace, the Winter Palace, much like Louis XIV had the Palace of Versailles. All right, so one thing too about him, these fountains all surrounding uh, St. Petersburg, right? You know how Louis XIV had these beautiful fountains, these beautiful gardens? Well, he tried to do the same thing. And his humor was almost like a middle schooler. He liked to try to spray people with water with these fountains. So he would have them walk down these lawyers or these representatives, let's say, from Western Europe. And he'd be walking down and he'd have the fountains trigger off as soon as they're walking in the location that he gets sprayed. Uh, I don't know why, I thought it was funny, this humor, but it goes to show, I guess, the big guy had a sense of humor. All right, anyway, there you go. Peter the Great. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so here's his expansion, which again, we'll talk about uh, the expansion under Catherine the Great a little bit later with Russia. But you can see how he expanded pretty far under Peter the Great. So again, the biggest one here is this North Church or Peter the Great. And here he is down here, right at the Black Sea's right here, looking access to that, past King Sea, and way up by the Baltic Sea where St. Petersburg is created. Another name for St. Petersburg is the city built on bones. Oh, thousands of people, peasants, died trying to create this massive city, right, to be supported because it was built on, well, like a swamp plant, a huge lake that's pretty much around it and uh, close to the Baltic Sea. You got to imagine in the winter months, it gets very, very cold. When we get to World War II, we'll talk about the siege of Leningrad, which St. Petersburg will go through a name change once Vladimir Lenin comes around for Russia. And uh, how the Germans surround it, and it gets really, really brutal. How they surround it and try to choke them off and try to force them to surrender, which they never do. But over a million people die of just harsh conditions, lack of food, lack of water. Over a million people died in that event, which we'll mention was in World War II. It is now St. Petersburg again. So after the fall of the Soviet Union, a lot of these names kind of changed back. So it's now St. Petersburg, this city in Russia. All right, anyway, like I mentioned, the Great Northern War, that's where uh, Peter the Great claimed this land up by the Baltic and down by the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea. So this expansion process of Russia has gone pretty far under these arcs. Is there any questions? So again, his control over his nobility, a little bit different than Louis XIV, right? So he kind of used this force. He used even his own means to make sure they look a little bit more sophisticated. Was a little bit more modernized. Anybody that tried to oppose him, he would wipe them out. And even what the video said, take their heads and put them on pikes right outside of the capital, right, right outside of St. Petersburg, and even Moscow, to show that there should be never a rebellion against Peter the Great, showing his power, showing his ability. All right, so here's your assignment. What you're going to do is just a short writing. Don't think it has to be two pages or anything, but if it gets that, great. What I want you to do is compare, contrast the leadership of Louis XIV, Ivan the Terrible, and Peter the Great. So you can write on a Google Doc. I'd recommend that. And just submit it to the assignment post. So again, here you go. Comparison. So compare the methods of leadership used by Louis XIV, Ivan the Terrible, and Peter the Great. So at least discuss two similarities between these leaders. So for all three here. And uh, maybe detail a little bit about their building projects. We went through each leader and mentioned about a building project that they had. 
What was the point of it? What was the reason for it? Right? Um, or these leaders, they had similar reasons for these palaces or these cathedrals. But in any case, why did they go about building this massive structure, these forms of architecture? And then discuss at least one difference here. So discuss their differences. The big thing, too, I want you to mention is about the nobility. How did these leaders control their nobility? How did they have power over them? What did they do? What did they do to try to achieve it? Maybe for Peter the Great, which we just went over, this was his control as to make it more sophisticated, make the borders look a little bit more appealing, more westernized, more modernized, right? That was the goal. All right, anyway, I'd recommend creating Google Docs. Make sure it's open, they're all shareable. Okay, just can't have it closed because then I won't be able to access it. So maybe that's the first thing you do. Title it, put your name at the top, make it shareable, and then I can have access to it once you submit to the All right, anyway, it doesn't have to be two pages. It doesn't have to be this long essay. I'm just looking for a comparison here. So just answer the prompts here, three bullet points, and you should be good to go. Again, this should be a way to boost your grade. If you need to do it, great. Just please work on the assignment. You got the rest of the time to do so. So, 12 minutes, 13 minutes, getting back. Please work on it. I don't want to see people turning around talking, right? I don't want to see people giggling, laughing, playing Fortnite. Yeah, or drawing Louis the 14th. Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to pass that. All right, here we go. Go ahead, get working.